ready to go. On the fan, New York Sports Radio. Mike's on, Mike's on. He'll get you the sports any way that he can. It's Mike Francis on the fan. Sports Radio 66 and 101.9 FM. WFAN. From the studios of WFN, this is Mike Zahn, Francesca on the fan on this uh, Monday, the 25th day of June. As we begin a late June week of baseball, for one team, a lost weekend. For the other, the continuation of what has become a, a completely lost season. For the Yankees, hey, they prove they're human. Sanchez gets hurt, which probably gives him a chance to straighten out all his ills right now. And if you want to see a lot of Romine, you'll see a lot of Romine in the next couple of weeks. So if you wanted, if you were one of the nuts screaming for that, you, uh, you basically got it. You'll see Romine day in and day out uh, for a good amount of time here now as Sanchez uh, goes to mend with his uh, very, very paltry 190 batting average. The Yanks in Philly where uh, after... A couple of days in uh, Tampa that will seem like a reprieve to go into a home haven like they're heading into uh, here where I expect them to get their, you know, get their offense in gear. Uh, an amazing performance by Tampa. And I'll tell you something. Uh, Tampa does more with less than any team. To have that roster beat this Yankee team three straight is almost unbelievable. I mean, to have that team in that division be 37 and 40 with that talent is almost unbelievable. Uh, amazing. Their efficiency of doing more with less is unbelievable. I mean, it's almost an amazing accomplishment what they did this weekend because you look at those guys and you look at the other team and you say, how could they ever be in three games in a row? I mean, it's um, it's amazing that they're able to do that. And what happened was the Yankees, you know what? They had gassed up the plane and they were, you know, they were losing fuel. So they said, hey, let's put Shreven. We'll get this over with in a hurry. And, and away, they, away they went and they did uh, as, they, as he made sure to finish things off in uh, fine fashion. But Hey, you'd almost have to be faking it to create the idea of tension around this Yankee team with the way it has played the first half of the season. Do they have a couple of issues? Yes, they could use a lefty in the pen as a, as a, as a specialist, okay? They can still go shopping for that guy who could start game two in the postseason against a tough opponent. Uh, we know that. Uh, they have to decide the back of the roster and decide whether Walk is a keeper for the rest of the season considering he's slumped lately. Do you bring Drury up and try and see if you can, you know, get Bird going by, you know, flipping Drury at him at first base for a couple of days and use that as a prod to get uh, Bird going. Those are all nice little problems to have with a team that you know still has a very gaudy uh, 667 win percentage. On the other side of town, you know what? The only thing missing is if we wanted to just uh, do what they used to do on the old Sports Extra, if you go back those years to Jerry Eisenberg and uh, Bill Mazer, when things get really bad, they do one of those video montages and play sending the clowns. Well, that's what you would do right now for the Mets because that's all that's left to do. After, if you were watching Saturday night as I was, if Eddie had not prompted a question at the end of the press conference about Vargas, we would not have known that they didn't have a pitcher for Sunday. It was Eddie who said, hey, is something going on with Vargas? Right at the end of the press conference, I have to be watching it. Hey, is something going on with Vargas? Oh, well, yeah, you know, he's, uh, he's not going to be able to pitch tomorrow. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring everybody in and we'll then decide who's going to pitch. So the Mets told you on Saturday night that they did not have a plan for their Sunday starter as they left the ballpark Saturday night. This is the major leagues. This is the Mets and the Dodgers. And they told you that. And then they decided to start a guy who basically, you could you tell his heart wasn't in it? I mean, did you see his expressions as the ball went out of the... Did you see the classic expressions by Blevins as the balls went out of the ballpark on Sunday? I mean, actually, the funny part was after the first two batters, you're thinking, what is going to possibly go on here? But as it turned out, they probably did better than Vargas would have for the same amount of time that he pitched because the next couple of guys actually pitched well until they got to what they thought was the back of the pen, and then the homers started again. And amazingly, 
amazingly, they had to go find an ex-Met to come in and allow them to have a three-run rally and have a guy who had never hit a three-run homer hit a three-run homer. Because the only way he could hit one is to hit it off an ex-Met who gave up a walk, a bloop, and a blast. And now it's in a 7-4, 7-7. You're saying, oh, my God, wait, how, how will they lose it? Well, when they did was lose it the way they lose everything. Give up another home run and lose the game as they did. But it's more than that. It's, it's just the expressions. When asked after the game, why? A legitimate question. Why you did not think of bunting Smith with a runner on first? To state he's never bunted. Is this the majors? I mean, it, he's never bunted. Like it would never cross our mind to ever t- spend 15 minutes having some of our extra players, which is what he is, or a guy who's just coming out of the minor leagues. They've never worked on a bunting drill with this guy in his whole career, and this is Major League Baseball. He's never bunted. So we let him go up there and take three flailing swings and head back to the bench having not advanced the runner. I mean, that's exactly what you get. I mean, it is just more comical by the minute. And it's, it's, all, it's not even so much the losing as the way they're losing and the lack of emotion, except for the players who seem to be ready to break everything in sight now. It's, it's the little things. It's the Grom getting squeezed by an umpire who gave Kershaw the biggest, the biggest home plate you could ever have. So he's getting squeezed while Kershaw's getting every call known to man. He argues with the umpire who tells him to go sit down, and you don't even come out as a manager and back him up. Here's your franchise pitcher who's being told to go sit down by an umpire who's squeezing him, who's literally squeezing him and is giving Kershaw the calls. And no one even comes out to back him up. It's the whole idea of, oh, we don't have a pitcher for today's game. We don't, you know, we'll, we'll decide tomorrow. Who's going to pitch? Well, why'd you pitch him? Eh, why not? Why not? Why'd you start him? Eh, why not? I start somebody. I mean, that's where we are. And then the end of the game, we're out of sync. We're out of sync. That's the explanation after, you know, 30 days of losing. Two weeks of losing at home. Seven home runs to the Dodgers. In the game, sitting through a game on a giveaway Sunday where nine out of ten people in the building were rooting for the Dodgers. Watching that nonsense from start to finish, and the answer is, eh, we're out of sync. The amazing thing is, somehow, go back to this very cold, rainy April. Somehow this team started the season winning all those games. That is the only thing that stands between this team and it being the worst team, not only in the National League, but in baseball. This team has played like the worst team in baseball for such a long period of time now. And players just go... They sit Rosario down for days. Why? Rosario hasn't been any worse than the rest of them. In the last seven games, he actually has a 300 batting average. He decided to sit him down for days? What is he thinking? Jose, you can use him in a spot here and there. You can't play him every day. And the kid is sitting, why? For what reason? I don't get that they have a reason for anything anymore. You know, it just feels completely out of control. And it's above the manager here. Listen, the manager, I mean, he's in the ozone somewhere. I'm sorry. Okay. I I don't, you know, listen, I wouldn't want to manage that team either. I'll be the first to admit it. Nobody would want to manage what he's been asked to manage. They've got 44 players on the disabled list. You don't know when they're coming or going. 
You don't know who's pitching or playing or anything else. I understand all that. You look down the bench, they bring in a lefty, you don't have a righty on the a, on a bench to put up. I mean, I understand it's not pretty. But it's almost an acceptance, almost an idea that, oh, you know, uh, and he sat there the other night and I watched and he said, we're preparing well. I like the way we're preparing. How can you like anything about what you're watching and what you're living through? How can you, how can you like anything of it? How are you not seething? And listen, this blame goes way above him. I mean, they need to shake things up all the way down the line. And I'm not talking about ownership, folks. The owners are going nowhere. It's not about the owners. They're not going anywhere. But there has to be really a lot of change in that organization. And, it, I mean, you just can't keep doing the same things. I'm sorry. You just can't. Somebody's got to answer for some of this mess. And it is a mess. I'm sorry. There's no other word for it. You can be nice about it. You can sit here and scream about it. You can do whatever you want. It's a mess. I mean, it is just a... Sometimes you got to say what it is. It's just a flat mess. And it's almost gotten to be... It, it, they're laughing stocks. It's almost like you, you, you find yourself laughing at them. And people who are covering them are laughing at them. And everybody who's talking about them is laughing at them. So beating on them is no fun. But you have to acknowledge what you're watching, which is just pure garbage. There's no other word for it. I, I'm not trying to tell you the kids out there who aren't wearing a uniform aren't trying. They're trying. I mean, but half of them are miscast. Half of them aren't any good. Some of them are just disillusioned at this point. Wouldn't you be? At what you're looking at? I mean, how can you just leave the ballpark? How can, first of all, the sad thing amazed me. He wasn't even going to tell anybody what was going on with, with, with Vargas. That's number one. It wasn't even, if Eddie didn't bring it up, they were not even going to mention that there was an issue with Vargas. They knew since Wednesday that Vargas had an injury. All the way back to Wednesday, and on Saturday night, they have no plan for a pitcher on Sunday. I'm not even going to get to all the different rumors about guys who were supposed to pitch yesterday and they didn't get there in time and everything. Who cares? The bottom line is, how do you not prepare for this? And then why start blabbing? I mean, a guy who's been probably as disappointing for you as anyone, you think you want to shake him out of his problems by starting him? Listen, it's just, you, you, you sat there and watched the Dodgers run around the bases on a day where everybody in the building was rooting for the Dodgers. I mean, it almost was bizarre. There's no other word for it. They gave up seven home runs. They've lost 12 straight games to the Dodgers. They've lost 12 out of 13 at home. They've lost six games in a row. They've lost 14 out of 18, something like 23 out of 29. They're 13 games under 500. They're out of sync. Back after this.